and I begin my review and opinions of the Netflix series Dancing for the Devil, Episode 2, The Escape. I just want to say, I've always liked the documentaries. I love watching them. It's probably one of my favorite things to watch. But watching this part, I really got the feeling that it was totally one-sided. So, let's begin. It starts out with the lady talking about um, a rash on someone's head. I'm, I'm guessing it was her forehead. And they put rubbing alcohol on it, and it was so bad, and nothing was working. And people would come over every day and pray for her, and nothing was helping. And then one day, there was like a, a baptism, and they were at the ocean, and the lady was got the salt water, I guess, and it healed her. It, it was just, um, I don't know. A lot of Robert Sheehan's voices was in the documentary or allegedly in because I really couldn't tell for sure if it was his voice or someone else's. It it really didn't make it clear. But it ended up that people started crying because they witnessed a miracle. This woman was healed within a few days. And it reminded me, you know, of some of these churches that do go around and do all this stuff. How true all this is, I have no idea. But evidently they're stating, you know, uh, Robert Sheehan took credit for it. And I did see a sermon. And it said something about in the body. God has built a healing mechanism. You don't have to go to the doctors. What are you doing? You're letting God's design work to heal thyself. Something like that. I can't remember exactly. But it sounded a little bit freaky. Another woman spoke about how people would be led in thinking that Robert Sheen was the man of God through him seeking a path to heaven. I have to say, you know, some preachers do say that. And my daddy always taught me to believe in what I believe in rather than what some man is telling me to go with my gut feeling. But it really threw me back. And, you know, I do believe in God and I'm not as religious as I should be, I guess, but and I could care less about somebody else's religion. That's them. Regardless of what you believe in, I still think you are a wonderful person. Unless you've hurt somebody, then I probably think it, you know, you're not that great. It was a little bit hard because they were throwing off on his religions and what they believe. And I just don't know because I'm not hearing his side and I'm not going to his church. They talk a lot about his beliefs. And the housing situation, it talked about um, the dancers would live together for a few weeks and then they would move to a different house. It was like they was popping from one house to another. And I got to thinking about that and I wondered, were they moving around so that I know, or I, no, I don't know. I have seen or heard the dancers they are at. And I'm wondering if they don't go to these homes or they go to these homes to pair up with another person. So they stay there a few weeks, gets their videos done and whatever, and then moves on to work with another person. That's just what I'm thinking. They really did push the fact that they thought this was a cult. Whether it is or not, that's to be seen. 
also noticed that this seemed really, in my opinion, scripted a lot. Maybe if I had not watched the first episode, I may have watched this one. But then I'd probably say, oh, why the heck did I watch this in the first place? Um, someone spoke about before the dancers, Shin was involved, I believe it was, I can be wrong, with singers. And evidently these singers really didn't make it. And so that got me to thinking, are they jealous of these dancers and is that why all this is going on is that why uh, it's jealousy going in that and then they had to put the Wilkies back in there and that it really just bothers me it was Wilkies and another set of parents it did say in there that um, and it's alleged Robert Shin did tell the dancers to seek out their parents and start communicating and talking to them. And I thought, you know, that is good. Uh, Miranda reached out to her parents. It seemed like things were going good. But they were sitting at a table, and I, Miranda wasn't there. It was Melanie, Miranda's parents, and another lady, and... I got the feeling that between this other lady and Melanie, they were trying to pull the parents away from Miranda. I think a comment was made even that they're giving in to Miranda's demands. But I'm thinking in myself, man, you have your child back. Even though she's an adult, you have her back. Go by her rules if you want a relationship with her. Don't let someone else sway you a different way. And I couldn't understand. If you have your child back, why are you sitting around the table? It sounded like bashing to me. So why would you sit there and bash your daughter, in my opinion? Another set of parents also spoke about their son, they would fly out there to see him, and they would tell him, we're not going to leave you alone. We're going to keep seeing you at the door. And they have the cameras with them. I mean, if I would be the son, I'd say, get the heck out of there. You know, you're trying to film this, what, to make yourself look good like you really care? Why not just, hey, not take the cameras? Go see him. Ask him if he wants to see him. But instead, they tell him they're not going to go away. And he even throws, the dad even throws pedals against the window to try to get his attention. And it all, in my opinion, seemed like a show to me. I mean, you could tell all this was being filmed. Why would you want to film this? Why would you want people to see you begging your child back. Why would you want to condemn your child, in my opinion, that way? And the one woman that spoke about Robert Sheen, I think she was in some kind of lawsuit at one point with him, and I think it was dropped or something like that. You could tell that she, or I felt, in my opinion, that she had some really anger issues. And I'm not saying she's not a victim at all. I'm not saying that because I tend to believe victims and I would not want to hurt anyone. But it does seem to me like she is really hurting. And then it also showed a few dancers who have left and spoke out. This one gentleman spoke out that when it was like walls started crashing in on them in a way in my opinion, is it started coming out, and we know who allegedly started all this, condemning the dancers, getting jobs pulled from them, 
and everything, that they started leaving. In the documentary, it was kind of like they wanted to blame Robert Sheen for this. But I'm getting from it, in my opinion, that they saw everything coming crashing down. And I would get, if it was me, I would get scared that I would get a bad name for being in this. So, yeah, I would leave. The one lady who did speak up about Robert Sheehan, I was just talking about, she's told a few stories about being ABUSED by them. So I want to leave it out because I do not want to disrespect her in any way whatsoever. But all of this... I don't know. It was like, I got an eerie feeling from it. I got a feeling that a lot of it was scripted. And it was really nothing that I haven't heard before. Oh, and they did. You know, um, I have seen Katie Joy put a post about uh, the Clippers and different things like that. They didn't show that part in there of her doing anything. It showed the part where they had a Rolling Stones article. So I believe it's been all thrown down to Rolling Stones. That's just how I feel. And Katie Joy, she did get credit at the very end. And oh, what was that? Okay, here it is. The credits, Katie Joy, her name, did appear as an archival consultant. It didn't give her last name, though. It just said Katie Joy. So that could be anybody, but I'm sure she is jumping up and down. But I'm sure she's kind of pissed off that they didn't give a last name or at least uh, acknowledge her having a channel. So that's just my review. And uh, I guess I'll... Try to stick it through episode three. And this is hard to watch. It's um it's like I haven't learned anything really. I'm guessing, well, if I had to say exactly what I got out of this, it seemed to me like a lot of Rumors. That's what I felt like when I was watching. It wasn't giving me total facts. It was giving me rumors of things that happened. And I could give rumors all day. But to each his own, I guess. But thank you for watching. And I will do, oh, make myself do episode three. And if you would, hit that like, share, comment button, and uh, subscribe below. Ring that bell to be notified by all, so you'll be notified every time I upload a video. Thank you.